hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel so today we would be continuing our discussion on the simulation of different kind of multi-phase flows and if you haven't checked out already i uploaded a video on how to simulate the open channel flows using ansys fluent just a couple of days ago so it would be a good idea to check it out and see how we can use the volume of fluid that is vof multi-phase model to simulate an open channel and in the tutorial today I will try to simulate an uh, impinging jet on a flat surface. So this is like the schematic of the problem. So we have a jet coming in vertically and it hits a horizontal surface. So this is quite an interesting problem from a fluid dynamics point of view because in this problem you get a free jet and when it impinges you get a wall jet. So there's a boundary layer along the wall and there's a free jet away from the wall. So this is a very commonly studied problem using different kind of numerical techniques and we would be trying to see if we can use the different multi-phase models to simulate this problem in ANSYS Fluent. So going to the workbench, I've already solved this problem. So I'll demonstrate the geometry, mesh and the setup. And after that, I'll just straight away head to the solution tab because this is the case of a transient problem and it takes a while to set up this problem. So now we're in the design modeler, which is the software that I would use to design this particular problem. So first of all, I start by choosing the plane in which I want to design. So I'll just select the X, Y plane because that's usually very convenient for the 2D problems. And I'll start by clicking a new sketch. When I go to the sketch one, I go to sketching and I turn on the grid so that I can see where I'm actually drawing. So I'll keep the units default because that is right now irrelevant because I don't want to go into the numerics and the dimensions of the problem. I will just want to model a very simple case. So I start by first uh, drawing the chamber that would contain the jet. So like a domain for the wall and on the top of that I would uh, sketch a jet. So what I'll do is I'll just simply start by drawing a rectangle like this so this one would be the side wall so that the jet doesn't spread out because we can't have like an infinite domain and I'll leave a little space for the jet So the snap to grid feature is really cool because it lets you snap direct to the grid points and it's pretty useful when you're trying to make something very rough. So right now this would be a very typical system that you can use to simulate this jet. So the jet would be coming from this end and it would just hit the wall over here. So as you can see it's a very simplified version. So what you can do to modify the problem here is that you can Rather than have this as a rectangle, you can make an uh, orifice, which is really fine, and that would like accelerate the jet, and you would actually have a very fine jet coming out of it. But to model this, I'll just leave the feature as it is, and then once this is done, you can further change the dimensions using the dimensions tab. I'll just leave it by default, and I'll go to modeling again, and I'll go to concept, and I'll create a surface from sketch. I'll pick my sketch, click on apply and generate. So that's my domain, that's my 2D domain now. And finally, I'll just go to the surface body and choose it by fluid as default. That's a good practice if you're using design modeler to create different solid and fluid surfaces. So once this part is done, I'll just double check, I'll generate again. And that's all we need to do with the design modeler. So the geometry is ready and then we go to the mesh to give it a good mesh. So now we have imported the geometry into the mesh module. So to start with, I'll just right click on the mesh and create generate mesh. And that would give me the basic mesh that ANSYS generally creates. So before going further into the meshing, I would just start by naming the edges that what those edges would actually imply in the physical domain. So this one would be the edge or the part where the jet would enter from so i would just call it jet in and for our tutorial we'll just consider everything else as wall 
So NSYS also does automatically assign everything else as well, but it has always been my practice that I'll do everything by myself rather than letting the software do it. So once that is done, you can see in the name selection you have jet in and you have the wall. Now we can try to refine the mesh further. So I usually go to insert and then I insert a sizing. I go to the face selection, I select this face and I apply it. So the one face is selected for the face sizing and right now the default element size is around 2.5 meter so let's say we start by 0 0.05 so this is a trial and error to see what kind of mesh do you want to see and of course if there are very sensitive boundaries you want your mesh to be finer around those points but I've tried that for this particular problem it works out pretty well that if you have a uniform mesh all over the system so I had to change the element size from 0 0.05 to 0 0.2 meter because it was just taking forever to generate that mesh on my really beautiful PC. So with this particular element size, what we get is a mesh that looks like this. So I hope that this would be acceptable. I personally think that it could be a little bit more finer given that it's a multi-phase problem. But we'll just go along with that for the meantime. So once your mesh is ready, then we are all ready to set up the physics of the problem here. So we go to the setup tab and we'll start uh, doing the physics. So I'll just update the mesh and then we'll head to the setup. So now our mesh is updated and when you click on the setup button, there is this dialog box that appears. So when you're solving the multi-phase problems, make sure you check in the double precision and because that's necessary to solve the multi-phase problems. And if you have parallel cores on your computing machine, you can go for the parallel one. Uh, since I, I don't have enough cores, so I'll just proceed with the serial ones and click OK. So after you enter the setup window, the first thing to do is to change your problem type from a steady time domain problem to a transient time domain problem because your problem includes coming over jet and interaction of the jet with the wall. And you can decide if you want to turn on or turn off the gravity so if you want to include the effects because of the gravity so gravity would include an additional force on the jet like a body force so in this particular problem i'll just uh, uh, take off the gravity and exclude it from the picture now comes the important part so for this particular type of problem we use the eilerian type of multi-phase models and I'll just uh, go on with the default schemes here because there are no special cases that I need to consider for this problem. And I'll go with the implicit formulation because that's usually more stable when it comes to taking higher or taking larger time steps. For the flow domain, we would use the SSTK Omega because this problem involves a lot of wall interaction. And as I emphasized earlier, in general, K Omega turbulence model is better at handling wall related problems than k epsilon 1 so i'll go on with the k, k omega viscous model the next thing comes is to define the phases so we know that we have a jet which is usually liquid it could also be an air jet but we want to make it a general case so i'll have a liquid jet so in my case i'll start with water so i'll go to materials and add water and I'll just keep the other fluid as air. So it's like a water jet coming into the air domain. So once I add the water here, I'll just close this window and I'll go to the phase. So in the phases, uh, the phase one is the primary phase, as you can see here. In the So I'll just choose air as the primary, do primary phase because that occupies entire domain at first and then I'll go to the phase two and choose water. So this has been taken care of now. So we have defined that air is the primary phase and water is the secondary phase. After the phase definition, we go to the boundary conditions because we want to tell ANSYS that this is actually a jet and it's not a wall. So I go to the jet in and change it to the velocity inlet right 
and now we want to tell ansys that only the water would be coming from here so what we do is we go to water from the phase drop down menu and click edit so because my pc is slow it takes a while so we go to the multi-phase tab and give a volume fraction of one and in the momentum you can define what is your jet inlet velocity so you uh you can put any number here depending on what your problem is and i'll just make sure that everything is a uh, stationary wall so i'll just go to the wall and make sure that it's a no slip condition on every wall and in the cell zone condition it's a good practice to check if everything is okay so in this particular case we don't have any motion so everything else is turned off and the last bit is to check the operating condition so we defined the origin to be somewhere around here so that's my reference pressure location that is for the ambient air actually in this case it's not really ambient because it's a closed domain then we go to the initialization of the problem and what we do is we start with the hybrid initialization and select initialize so ansys says that this case has only inlets which is true and the case is initialized with constant parameters so the next thing is to tell fluent that everything else inside is air so we go to patch and we say that the phase is water and volume fraction of zero inside the surface body and click patch so to check this you can go to graphics and you can go to contours and you can select say phases volume fraction air inside the body and you can display it so you can see that the volume fraction of one for the air has been initialized inside the domain and the water at time t equals to zero would start coming from here as you can see from this little element size so after that is done what we do is we go to calculation activities and if you want to create an animation out of it for the presentation purposes you can auto save your solution after every few time step or if you want any detailed information you can also export your solution data and you can select the parameters that you want to save depending on what software you want to save uh, use for the output and click ok and i'm not doing that because my computer doesn't just have enough memory so i usually just auto save every few time steps and that usually gives me good animation and uh, good data at different times and after that you can go to the solution run calculation tab and you can specify the time step so i usually start with a smaller time step which is around 0 0.005 or 0 0.01 and the iteration per time step it varies between 40 to 70 depending on how stable or how unstable your problem at the beginning is so i have uh, actually solved this problem already so now uh, without actually doing the calculations uh, i'll go to the problem that i solved here so i'll go to the results tab but in case if this setup doesn't work for you please let me know in the comments i'll i'm pretty sure that the setup that i told you is exactly similar to the setup that i did here but even then if there is any problem feel free to let me know in the comments so this was the problem that i solved so you can see that the geometry is very similar except the fact that these both sides they are almost equal to each other and the jet is very thin so i wanted to make sure that the stream that comes is actually like a jet and this is at time t equals to zero and i've solved the problem for approximately 11 seconds which took around an hour on my pc so as you can see that i've shown in the setup earlier that uh, the water enters from the top and that's where the volume fraction is one and there is air everywhere else so what i can do is i can go to some time step that actually shows how the jet is coming in so before i talk about individual time steps i'll first like to show you how the jet actually interacts with the wall so i've created an animation using the animation tab here so what i do is first i contour the water volume fraction on the surface of this domain and then i go to this little animation button 
and I just do the time step animation of that contour and that gives me a movie that I can save for the later use. So I'll just play that out movie and you'll see how the jet actually comes in. So I've just paused it for a while. So you can see that the jet, because of its inlet velocity, there is a pressure that the jet has and because of that it comes into the domain and then it will come and hit the wall and we want to see what happens after that. So I particularly like this feature that because we have a very confined domain, so once the jet hits the wall, it spreads in the two different directions as it should because of the 2D domain. And then again, because the domain is confined, so it goes around in the circles creating these big vortex. So I'll just put, play it back. So this is where the jet hits the wall and it separates into two different directions. And now it's starting to go and creating these little vortex so I can uh, solve this problem further and we know from the common sense that because the water is coming in and there is no outlet so the water will just keep on accumulating within the domain so to further visualize the results uh, we can see the velocity vectors so I personally prefer vectors over streamline because they give you the idea of the direction as well as the magnitude so I, I think i've already plotted the vectors here so i'll just go to the vectors and tick it on so i've created these vectors on the symmetry plane which is the surface and i'll just reduce them by a factor of 10 because there were just too many vectors so i'll go to some time step close to which the jet actually hits the surface yeah that would be good enough now i'll zoom on the near wall region so you can see here that uh, from the direction of the vectors, you can see that the vectors are pointing down as long as the jet is coming in and then the jet spreads in two different directions as it should. And the, this, the, and you can see these tiny vortices being created and as the jet continue moving away from the wall or away from the actual jet towards the wall and then towards the corners and then the magnitude of the velocity changes of course that's what the colors are indicating and the water goes up because it has nowhere else to go and it has enough momentum to travel up and further it goes down and then these big vortices are created because of our limited domain so this is a very good uh, way to represent your physical data you can also use streamline, but streamline only gives you the indication of the direction, but not of the velocity. So vectors give you enough information about the flow field. And for the contour, I've already demonstrated that I'm using the water volume fraction. And if you use the air volume fraction, it would be just the opposite. So once you know how to solve this kind of problem, you can apply the similar knowledge to other interesting kind of problems. A very common in, interesting CFD problem is the impingement of the, the jet on a hot or a cold wall. So in this particular problem, we have taken everything as isothermal, but you can again take into consideration the temperature effects that you want to simulate. So you can have, for example, a cold jet coming on a hot plate. So all you have to do is uh, in the jet entry, you have to define the inlet temperature for the incoming jet and you have to define this as a separate wall. So rather than defining all of these surfaces as wall, you can define this as a heated wall and the other ones as just the walls. So for the heated wall, you can have some hot temperature and for the incoming jet, you can have the cold temperature. So that's one of the variation in which this problem can be solved. So I hope that with this tutorial, you would be able to have a good understanding of how to apply the Eulerian multiphase model and how to simulate a jet that is impinging on a flat surface. So if you like the video, please don't forget to press the like button. And I would really appreciate if you can subscribe to my channel as it would help you to stay up to date with the latest post. And if there are any suggestions that I can implement for the future videos, please don't hesitate to let me know. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching.